Now that we're diving into compression, we have to take into account the aggressiveness of the delivery of the vocal. If it's very quick and loud, that's going to be compressed differently than if it's very slow and melodic. Our overall goal is to get the loudest parts of our vocal and the quietest parts closer together to make them sound more consistent. The first thing I want to do is remove our other effects, so we're just focusing on compression. And you can see the peaks are what we're trying to take care of with the compression. We want those closer to the body and the distance between the peak and the lowest part of our body is our dynamic range. And it's good to have variety, but not to this extreme. First, I'll start with a baseline track with no effects enabled. This baseline track will help us visualize the vocals as they were originally recorded. So in our compressor, I'm starting to move settings around. I have the headphones on, and it's still a bit of a challenge to tell which direction to go in. And then I noticed that the settings like input and output, when I was teaching myself about compressors, those weren't really used. So maybe there's a compressor that's a little bit more traditional and has something, yep, there it is, attack, release, threshold, ratio. And we're going to leave knee where it is for now and just focus on those four core properties. So I'm trying to adjust them by ear. And it's still really hard to tell what's going on. We're going to need some visual help. So if I click on the little menu for the track, I can download it, give it a unique name that'll help me recognize it. And then I can add, and then I can import the new track. And look at them side by side. Although, I realize heavy comp is not a very easy name to follow. So we're going to put some settings into our names. So we've got different threshold values. It's becoming easier to follow what's going on. I can see how the threshold corresponds to the shape of the body of the vocal signal. So a zero threshold, everything is getting compressed. And the 60 threshold, I can see that those really sharp first syllables of a line are getting distorted. They're just flat on the top. So I'm thinking somewhere between zero and 30 as a ballpark. 30 still has some flat peaks, but a much larger body. Now I'll try to hone in on the threshold settings. It 
and I'll create a couple different copies to reference. Now looking at the difference between 0 and 10 threshold, Ten's got a much stronger audio signal, but I need to make sure that that's just not the, the volume, that it's the actual dynamic range. So I bump it up again, and we can see with a threshold of 20, then dynamic range is a lot smaller. Our highest parts and our lowest parts are pretty close together, M maybe too close. So it looks like somewhere between negative 10 and negative 20. So we'll go with negative 15 as the starting point for our threshold. And I'm just double checking that one more time against our other references. So we'll load back in our vocal track without any effects. And now I'm going to try to dial in the ratio. And that's how much I want it to compress when the compressor kicks in. I've read that for something like rap vocals, and other sources where you want the vocal right up in the front, that a higher ratio like 6 to 1, 7 to 1, 8 to 1 is desirable. Whereas for more soft and melodic, you might only want 2 to 1. So let's compare that, the 7 to 1 and 2 to 1. I'm getting a lot more body in the vocal on the 7 to 1. It's kind of smoothed out the peaks as well, where there's a little buildup and a little fade on them instead of just being little bloops. Now that we have a ballpark for our threshold and our ratio, it's going to be a little bit harder, but we'll move on to attack and release. Again, I'm creating a couple different copies of the same track with different attack settings. And I'm just looking for the patterns. Unfortunately, BandLab Mobile doesn't have very good level metering. So this is kind of as good as it gets with my limited knowledge of the program. I see a little bit of effect on the body. An attack of a thousand is a stronger signal. But they're all generally the same shape. And this made me think of something that I read about exaggerating the threshold in order to make the attack a little bit more obvious. 
just temporarily to dial the attack in. So even though we're going to use a threshold of negative 15, let's take that all the way over for now in order to see if that can help us understand attack. I can definitely hear the difference that the attack is making when the threshold is that far over. And just to visualize it, you can see an attack with a speed of 500 milliseconds is peaking. With a, a speed of 500 milliseconds has those peaks clipping. They're just buzzed across the top. And that means we're losing part of the signal that we could be using. And conversely, when the attack was at 1, our body was completely flat. And that meant we're definitely losing a ton of the signal. I settled on using an attack of 100. That way I could get the really strong body and not let that peak sit out there too much like 50 did. Now let's move on and use that same process for dialing in the release speed. We'll create a few copies with different settings, compare them. So I can tell because of how close these are that my threshold is set back to negative 15. So now I'm wondering if I exaggerate it just like I did for the attack speed, if playing with that threshold can make it more obvious what the release is doing. It's holding on to that first syllable and making that really sharp and then just clamping down for the rest of the line. So a release speed of a thousand really crushes the body of the vocal and then has really loud first syllables. Let's compare a few more settings. So I can kind of see as I go from the bottom up that the body gets bigger and bigger. With a release speed of one, there's almost no dynamic range in the vocal take. Something around 100, again, for the release and the attack looked pretty good. Now I want to try to double check the ratio that I dialed in earlier. So I'm comparing a few different examples. And I can see that at ratio 16, some of our peaks are clipping. But as we go to ratio 8 and 4 and 2, our highest peaks, our transients, are really far above the body. 
So that's too much dynamic range. So I'm going to stick with the, the ratio of 8. Now I'll turn back on all the other effects and see what we have. Well, oh, I can't forget to remove the compressor we don't want to use. Otherwise, that would invalidate everything we just did. Let's give it a listen. My vocal line is sounding more even, but it could be smoother. Oh, before I forget, save. I'm thinking that now we have a better understanding of compression, we have to go back to EQ and dive a little bit deeper there in order to take down some of the peaks before we get to compression. And I'll see you next time.